Shut up and sit down. All right, good Husker Magic Saturday night. It's once again time for another installment of the Greyhound Race of the Week. How's everybody doing? Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, I'm monitoring the feed from Derby Lane, so when they come to the race, if we're still in the middle of all this foolishness, uh, we'll cut over to the race. If not, we'll wait till the end, and uh, we'll stick it on here for anybody who... Um, can't get the Derby Lane feed. We'll we'll just feed her feed her up right here. Uh, a big warm welcome to a new member of the Support Working Animals Legal Team, uh, Attorney Don Alba out of West Palm Beach. Um, welcome aboard, and <laughs> welcome to the show that never ends, or we could say uh, welcome to the jungle. We got fun in games. All right, I know there's a lot of people sitting on pins and needles. That's the only real update. It's getting close to getting filed. Um, we keep saying that, keep saying that, I know. But you know what? One of my friends once said something. Let's take a listen. And Greyhound Nation, it's going to get filed. But like my friend Aaron Rodgers once said. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Aaron says we're going to be okay. R E L A X. Relax. Because when this thing gets filed, I can tell you a few people who aren't going to R E L A X. And that would be Carrie Teal and Christine Dorchak. I see they're on their way, living off high off the hog of the donor's money over to Ireland. What a bunch of scumbags. And that brings us to tonight's opening lines. Opening lines. Uh, anybody out there want to sponsor opening lines? We'll put your business right up there. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Oh. It's a scam alert. Great 2K is at it again. Um, as you might have seen, they're uh, out and about in West Virginia. A uh, little problem out in West Virginia. I don't think they're going to have the legislative support. But this fool, uh, Senator Mitch Carmichael, 
I, I didn't think I would ever find a legislator dumber and stupider and basically, to be honest, more of a fucknut than Tom Lee. But we found one in West Virginia, and his name is Mitch Carmichael. Uh, Mitch Carmichael wants to end Greyhound racing in West Virginia. Gee, how about that? Uh, claims that there's a subsidy. Well, there isn't really a subsidy from what I learned. Basically, the money comes out of people who are already gambling. Okay? And great 2 k is out there in Virginia saying that uh, they want to get rid of this quote-unquote subsidy. Well, that's interesting. Um, they want it, They think there's better places for that money, and it's not back to uh, the breeders that are bound to breed in West Virginia and they're actually made to leave their uh, pups with the mom for a year otherwise they don't get money out of the breeders purse or the breeders this money that's taken out of gambling but that's an interesting fact because Carrie Teal is on the board of what what the hell's the name of that farce another fake nonprofit organization something about anti-gambling where they don't like gambling so basically what Teal is saying is we want the gambling money to go somewhere else. So we don't care about gambling, but even though they say they don't want people gambling, because that in essence is what would happen here, because that, I think it's what, 10, 12, 13, 14 million? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's north of $10 million that is given back to the breeders every year. And a lot of people like to call it a subsidy, but it's not a subsidy. A subsidy means when it's coming out of the taxpayer's pocket. So when Joe Taxpayer who doesn't want greyhound racing is paying for greyhound racing and paying the breeders that's called a subsidy but this isn't a subsidy this money comes out of the handle the gambling money that is wagered in West Virginia so basically what Teal is saying is yeah we don't give a shit about gambling come on just keep the gambling but we want greyhound racing stopped and take that 10 or whatever million it is and give it back somewhere else maybe fix a road I don't know you know he don't even can live there so I don't, <laughs> once again you got the tool tool teal the tool who's of course last name rhymes with steel and that's basically what they do is steel so here you got Carmichael again you know the senator Carmichael it, he's he's just a moron and basically he supports this because this is what we came across this week we came across this Facebook page that is posting the link for some dumbass petition to stop racing West Virginia by Great 2K. So the name of the page is the West Virginia Spay Neuter Assistance Fund. So we did a little checking on this. It seems that the West Virginia Spay Neuter Assistance Fund is actually state mandated in the state of West Virginia. So they give out grants and it's administered by the state. It's a state law. But the people who run this page, as we found out, have nothing to do with the state. So they are impersonating a state agency. Okay? Impersonating a state agency. And this is a, a, a splinter group that goes down to uh, another gray 2K. I think it's F F H O A A or something like that. But it's another it's another splinter organization that gray 2K is behind to end racing. But leave it to Gray 2K to be part of a scam where there's a web page that is impersonating a state agency. So we went to the state agency, and basically one of our members said, I was interested to find out why the state is lobbying for or against Greyhound Racing. I've attached a picture of the Facebook page that states they are West Virginia Spay Neuter Program, and have started using it as a political platform. The answer from the Virginia West Virginia Department of Agriculture, which is uh, uh, tasked with overseeing this program, says this Facebook page is not under the WVDA, but I can see how the name can be confusing. We have asked the owners to change the name. They asked. The owners have not changed the name as of yet. Another member wrote into um, basically to the D Department of Agriculture. This time it was sent to several members of that, that division. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Commissioner, Commissioner Lenhart has directed staff to investigate. So, here you go. You got Great 2K behind another website, which is, imper again, impersonating a state agency. Right, Barbara. Somebody should be effing thrown in jail. 
These people have no scruples. They have no, no morals, and they don't give a shit what they say to get what they want. And it's about time people know. And when this lawsuit is filed, the whole world is going to know that these people are nothing but fucking scum. You want to know how scum they are? Remember, they're bringing up all sorts of abuse things. Well, I don't have the evidence, but I have heard through a rumor that between 2014 and 2018 on surprise kennel inspections in West Virginia, there was only two that failed. Two in four years. Where's the abuse? Oh, well, here. Here's a here's an email, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up here because this was an email. I had a little email exchange with Hank Cox. Those of you that don't know, Hank Cox was, is a prominent attorney up in the Jacksonville area. He was on the CRC. And when I asked him about his views of abuse, he says, if I recall correctly, Bill Schifino, Frank Kuppenbrocker, and I agreed that if this process had been a court of law, we would never would have been satisfied that the dogs were abused. But it should be noted that Hank Cox has not taken any money from Great 2K. Hank Cox has not taken any money from the uh, Florida Greyhound Association or the NGA. Interesting, to say the least, that he would say that. Oh, but no, there were, as you may remember, there were more quotes at the CRC. There were much more quotes at the CRC. Uh, the aforementioned Bill Shafino himself said, uh, talking to Tom Lee, I understand that, but I saw no data, no statistics. I would have loved to have heard from some law enforcement individuals that have actually gone in and investigated these facilities. Well, you know what? Bill Shafino would never have heard of any of that because there was none. 67 counties in Florida and not one have any kind of police report of abuse that was mentioned that was going on in Florida. And now they're doing the same bullshit in West Virginia. The same line over and over again. Um, until somebody talks over that line uh, they'll be successful. But you know what? We're getting close. And we're getting close to get... We're, as soon as this suit gets into court, that's the first step in getting rid of Gray 2K. Again, Commissioner Cox, with respect to what you characterize as the hum inhumanity, with the 66 sheriffs off in departments of public safety, 20 state attorneys, and crimes in our statutes that make it a felony to abuse animals, and yes, it is in the Florida statutes, it's a felony. Felony animal abuse. So Gray 2K in Florida has accused people of felony animal abuse. Don Elba, you out there, next lawsuits, maybe should be defamation. We'll raise some money for that. Why is that not done with the horrors we have heard? Well, as Hank and I emailed back and forth together, because we know there was no abuse. And Hank Cox, if you remember, was the same commissioner that said uh, 13 got on the ballot just because it was, quote unquote, an emotional issue. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot about this in the weeks to come from a federal court near you. And again, Hancocks, what I didn't hear from all the people, the hundreds of people who complained about the abuses to animals, that any one of them had ever gone to law enforcement to complain about that abuse. Do you know why that would be? He's asking Tom Lee, and Tom Lee gave his stupid, dumbass response as usual. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a dumb, crooked politician. So, uh, it's painful to rehash some of this stuff, but some of this stuff is, is, is the, pretty much the reason why Support Working Animals has, has decided to file a federal lawsuit uh, claiming that 13 is unconstitutional. But wait, we have more. We have more. Here is our local idiot, false Freddie Barton. Fred posting again. Of course, he can't stay. He can't stay away um, from any of the messages under all these goofy articles in West Virginia that have been coming out. I've seen greyhounds with untreated in injuries, infested with ticks and fleas, undernourished with severe periodontal disease. The list goes on. Hey, Fred, guess what? You may be on that list to get sued for defamation. Why don't you come up with a police report? So you've been doing this how long? 15, 16, 17 years you've been shooting your mouth off for great 2K. Saying you've witnessed this abuse. Let's see a police report where you've reported it, dumbass. Stop shooting your mouth. Stop lying. Maybe start telling the truth. Why don't you put, why don't you put up or shut up? And I know this will get to you. You're a dumbass. Put up or shut up.
I'd love to see your ass get sued and lose everything you got, Mr. Professor of Rhetoric at Michigan State University. Wherever the hell it is you are, claim to be a, a professor. You're nothing but a jackass. All right, let's get on the let, let's get, get yeah, I'm sorry, I can't you know, get a little bit testy on this stuff because I'm tired of all the lying and all the BS and like I said, maybe I should take Aaron's Aaron's advice here and uh R E L A X Relax. We're gonna be okay. Alright, yeah, sorry Teresa, I forgot the uh the R rated. All right, let's get into why we're here. Um, they're at race seven at Derby Lane. Race seven, um, zero minutes to post. So uh, we may get this finished, and this may time up in, in time to watch the finals of the um, Husker Magic Stakes race, which probably is going to be the best race anywhere in Florida of the year. So you want to stick around for that. Yeah, Patricia, moving right along, I know. I, I told you I get a little bit passionate about this stuff. And I don't make a damn dime off of dog racing. I've never made a penny, but yet I'm called a dog track promoter or a breeder or whatever the hell uh, they're calling me. Um, they haven't had any death threats in six months, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, but All right, last week's winner has to be the best name I've ever seen. Chillaxification is last week's winner. Let's take a look at that race. Here comes Rustin. The box is open there, Ralph. And do it. It's one out front first. Here comes the rest of the pack, though. Down the middle, it's eight. Now the leader on the front stretch into the clubhouse turn. Eight Iowa choice out front. Going for four in a row here. As they come around the back stretch, it's eight, six, two, one, five, seven, four, and three. Down the back stretch, here comes seven. Moving up from make that six. Moving up on the outside, six. Chillification blowing the doors off of them down the front stretch. Chillification number six, your winner, followed by seven, eight, and two. Hold all tickets. It's actually chillaxification, so the track announcer got the name wrong, but that's okay. Chillaxification goes into the, um, I think we'll call it January Madness. We'll wait till the holidays are over and we'll do the uh, second half bracket. Um, another thing happened this week at Derby Lane. Hey, Matt, how you doing? I hope you don't mind. Uh, you see, I'm using uh, your, one of your picks at A-Side. Decided to switch up the um, the background on uh, Greyhound Race of the Week, and I redid the logo for KeepGreyhoundsRacing.org. So, um, hope you don't mind. Um, if not, talk to my attorney. Um, <laughs> at a race at Derby Lane this week, one kennel, Kelly Everett Kennels, in one of the races... Their dogs took first, second, and third. So that's pretty cool. So I thought that was worth mentioning this week and worth taking a look at. So here is the race from Derby Lane with what I call the Everett Trifecta. There's an air on the move. It's race number 10. It's post time. They're off and racing in the 10th at the break. Two, three, four, one, six, five, seven, and eight. It's B.D. Wells with the lead. The four is flying to climb second. The six is Bart's to the limit third. Two, four, six, eight, seven, three, one, and five. Around the turn, B.D. Wells. The four flying to climb the six, Bart's to the limit. The eight flying credible, B.D. Wells. All right, so on that race, you had B.D. Wells from the Everett Kennel, 1080, 260, and 420. Flying Declan, 220 and 260. Flying Credible paid 220 and 240. So the 248 um, were all uh, Kelly Everett dogs. Congrats, Kelly. That's pretty cool. I met Kelly at the, uh, um, the Naples 550 last year. Great guy. Uh, Kelsey, the trainer, I've never met her yet. I'm sure we will eventually. And uh, uh, our own Honey Badger, Mary Beth, uh, works part-time in the kennel there. So, okay, one thing here. Let me get rid of that. One thing, on the people's poll, okay, somebody has nominated Bunny, uh, Flamingo, Dance, Flamingo Dancer. She's already won the first half. Okay, so 
I'm going to ask you guys, do you want to put the same dog in the second half and then possibly have it come to where there's no, there's no final because Flamenco Dancer makes it to, to it wins the first half bracket and then wins the second half bracket. So um, I'm going to put up a poll maybe later. And tonight's poll will be up at 9.30. Um, so that's 11 minutes. So I guess we should get to um, this week's races. We have five. And some of these are very interesting. We have two ret yeah, two returners um, from first half that uh, didn't make it through the brackets uh, out of the five we have tonight. Uh, so the first one is RCK, Archimedes, I believe. Here we go from Derby Lane. Anson's in motion. They're off and racing in the ninth. At the break, it's an 8 1 2 uh, 6 uh, 3. It's the 5 now. RCK Archimedes. The 1 JS blown away. The 6 oh yeah, Mad Max. It's 5 1 6 3 2 4. Down the back stretch. RCK Archimedes. The 6 oh yeah, Mad Max. The 3 RS Libby Lee. It's 5 6 3 2 1 4. They'll head for home. RCK. Archimedes. All right, nice win there, RCK Archimedes. No doubt there at the end. Um, our second one this week is um, a returner, WW's Malort. There's an air on the move. It's post time. They're off and racing in the third. At the break, it's a 5 7 6 1 4 8 2. Around the turn, Roulette with the lead. Up on the outside, WW is Malort. The six is Oyad Diesel. It's 1 7 6 5 4 2 8. Around the turn, it's WW Malort. A roulette. Oh, yeah, Diesel. The five is Charlotte York. Down the stretch. It's close. It's close, but it was WW's Malort. Check out that. Check out that line. 34, 20, 17, and 680. Um, but we got a better. <laughs> we got a. We got a better line. A payout line than that coming up in in these five races. I've never seen this, but you you. It's, it's coming up. You just got to check it out. Okay, so the third dog we have this week is another returner, which is uh, Manzano Zia Fire. Here comes Rusty. Wayne Racing in the ninth. Who wants the lead? Three and one, battle it out. Two now rushes. Five, eight, seven, six, four is content to be last, and they're tightly congested through that first bend. With the two calling shots early, that's Manny Lane. Three in the chase. Oh, so sassy. There's the eight. Manzano Zia fire around close early, and this one could be tough from here. Manny Lane's all out, but here comes Manzano Zia fire on the off stride. Looks, comes back for more. Two looks to hang on. Eight's under a rally. A Big performance tonight by Manzano Zia Fire. Now that's what you call a nice race. Nice win there for uh, Manzano's Zia Fire. Yeah, that's can that's Candy's dog, right? Yeah, congrats, Candy. Uh, yeah. It's been a day, trust me. All right, Manzano Sea of Fire. That is our third of five for this week. And the next one, number four, is someone new. I haven't heard of this dog before, but it's Artie's Arlo. Anderson's in motion. They're off and racing in the ninth at the break. It's at 2 4, 6 1, 8 5, 3 and 7. It's the four Artie's Arlo with the lead. The one, a saber dagger. Up on the outside, the eight or not. Up the rail is, oh yeah, Elvira. It's four, one, eight around the turn. It's still R.T. Zarlo, saber dagger or not. R.T. Zarlo. 
What a nice win there for Ortiz Arlo after he got around that first turn um, and, and the clutter. He uh, never, never, never looked back. And here's the payout line I was talking about. <laughs> he paid 296.40 for the win. Who had that ticket? I didn't. Or not paid 1880 and 880. That's not bad, but 29640. Holy shit. 29640. Has anybody out there ever seen? I, I, I haven't really gone to the tracks. I've gone to now a few since since the last couple of years being involved in all this, but I've never seen a payout like that. Has anybody ever seen a payout larger than 29640 on a win ticket? Anyone? Hey, that's insane. Two ninety six forty. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, our fifth and final dog tonight is Flying Ronnie J. They're up and racing in the ninth at the break. Eight, four, one, two, three, six, seven. Around the turn, flying Ronnie J. Up on the inside, LK Short Fuse. The three, Red's Hot Chili is there. Dips to the rail now. It's four, eight, three, five, two, six, and seven. They'll head for home. LK Short Fuse, flying Ronnie J. The four. LK short fuse, it's close. It was close, but it was not LK short fuse. It was flying Ronnie J taking the taking the win for that. All right. So there's our five for this week. Um, as usual, I I finished this about five minutes before we went on the air, and I forgot something. I did do the video of the compilation for week six. So um, here we go. We're gonna get we're gonna get that thing going, and uh, let's get we'll get some uh, volume on that. Just give me a second to do that because I gotta I gotta play around with some stuff here. And... Okay, we'll start it over again. So this is the compilation of the five dogs for this week that we'll be voting on. In four minutes, the poll will be out. Uh, right now they are in race uh, six minutes to post on race eight so we're doing we're doing good on time I got some other stuff that we'll address after this and um, um, yeah all Derby Lane that's all I got I mean I put here's here's how I work it well let's yeah before we do the compilation I put I'll put up the thread and um, those are the first nominations I take so uh, if if you're if you got people who are fans of Orange Park, you know Best Bet, SOKC, whatever, all the rest of the tracks in Florida, um, get them to the site and have them start nominating races because we'll take up to six. Um, but if they don't nominate from other tracks, and I get five or six and they're all Derby Lane, well that's where they go. Now, if I don't get six, let's say I've only got two, three, or four, then what I do is go to Trusty Bob Crossland's feed where he congratulates all the winners of, uh, I'm assuming those are the dogs that he's had on his farm at one time or another. Um, and Bob, if you're listening, man, I'd love to have you as a guest uh, guest on the show one of these days. Um, we need to start getting more guests on here. Um, but yeah. Then I'll go over to Crossland's. Um, I'll go over to Crossland's feed and then uh, um, take a look and and take what I need from from there. So, yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, that's great. Okay, so here are the five for this week. Three, two, one, four. They'll head for home. R C K Archimedes. Oh yeah, Diesel. The five is Charlotte York. Down the stretch. It's closed. Comes back for more. Two looks to hang on. Eight's under a rally. A big performance tonight by Manzano Zia Fire. 
It's still R.T. Zarlo, Saber Dagger, or not, R.T. Zarlo. They'll head for home. L.K. Short Fuse, Flying Ronnie J, the four. L.K. Short Fuse, it's close. Okay, but yeah, we know that was um, a different horse. So, a dog. So, we got RCK Archimedes, WW Smallort, and Xanosia of Fire, RT Zarlo, and Flying Ronnie J. Those are your five for this week. The poll will be out in roughly less than a minute. Um, normally, when dogs retire, I'll put together a, a tribute, but uh, for PRM Arkansas, it looks like the NGA had put together a good one. So, for those of you that missed it, um, we have it here, right here. So here's to the big 95 pounder. Five pounder takes the lead down the stretch. PRM Arkansas. The big boy, PMR Arkansas, is home free. PRM Arkansas. Good luck, Big Arky. I'm sure the farmer's going to miss you in that kennel. Uh, for those of you don't, that don't know, uh, if you see the picture with the, one of the trainers holding this huge dog in his arms like a baby, that's uh, John Farmer. Is it John Farmer? It's one of the farmers. And, uh, you know, looking through that pictures, okay, so he won 10 out of 83 races, which basically isn't going to begin to, he only raced 83 times, won 10. And my understanding is that's not even enough money to probably cover the cost of uh, when when they purchased him. Um, so you would think that a dog like that that doesn't win, um, damn, his teeth look pretty good. You know, what's Fred Barton saying about the teeth? Um, fleas and ticks, well, you know what? This is Florida. Um, my dogs get get fleas. No ticks yet, but fleas every now and then. Uh, you know, during the three years, it's only been twice, but we've we've taken care of that. Um, he looked in pretty good shape for being an abused greyhound racer. Um, <laughs> you know, there's so many of these out there, and I'm actually for the website, I'm working on an on a SOT, S O T, straight off the track um, section where I got pictures people send to me or they've, they've posted on Facebook of all these racers and some of them are known, some of them are not coming straight off the track and there, there's nothing wrong with them now nobody's turning a blind eye and saying uh, that they don't come off with a broken leg but <laughs> trust me when I, when I tell you that maybe 5% may be injured coming off the track um that's not widespread abuse if you ask me um, 
I also found it funny too reading the West Virginia stuff this week about it got me thinking all of the drug testing there um, some of the positives they were all analgesics and I understand you're not, you, you don't want to race a greyhound's got a pull muscle you don't want to cover it up with analgesics to run a, a greyhound but what came to my mind is why no cocaine positives and I think those those tests that I looked at were over the course of a few years not one cocaine positive so what went on in Florida are the coke heads only in Florida I don't think so um, when you have the tainted sample where Tony Glover resigned his position as the racing czar in Florida after that sample was requested and then the sample did come back with no canine DNA on it um, we know he tampered with the sample maybe not him himself but there was some order and there was somebody along the line in DBPR that tainted that sample and I'm pretty sure that looking as there's no um, cocaine positives in West Virginia that uh, once again something to point out when the lawsuit comes up is that how could there be so many in one state and not the other and then maybe start looking maybe there's gonna start to be a string of positives in West Virginia because we know it's not beyond grade 2k or anybody they're affiliated with to do such a thing to try and taint a urine sample in order to push their agenda okay enough on those morons uh, well you know they're in trouble they don't know it but they're in trouble <laughs> they're, they're in big they're gonna be in big time trouble and their credibility is gonna be tested and I think it's going their credibility is going to fail all right so here's what we got they're in race eight right they just finished uh, race eight is about to go so we got some time here to take a look at um, um, the entries these are the entries for the Husker magic tonight so you've got in box one from the Nova kennel owner David Hayes trainer uh, Missy Kubitz is Deco Gatling gun so that will be your dog in the number one position in number two you've got Sabotage Steve 73 pounds from the Abernathy kennel owned by Steve Saracen trained by K. Ruth Abernathy in the three box you've got LK's Santorini 61 pounder out of the Lashmet kennel uh, owner is Jill Lashmet trainer is Ken Deacon And then here you got the four, 60, the 63 pounder. We're going to call her uh, Keep Greyhound Racing Zone Flamenco Dancer uh, out of the Farmer Kennel, owned by Sharon Dibble of uh, GST Sun State Adoption, trained by John Farmer. And then in the fifth box, thanks, Teresa. I'll get to that in a moment. I almost forgot, but I do have it on my sheet. Coming out of the five box, another Deco dog, Deco Colt Gun. Uh, again, out of the Nova Kennel, owned by David L. Hayes and trained by Missy Kubitz. That is the number five dog, Deco Colt Gun. Uh, and then number six, you've got uh, Flying Gavenshi, 67 pounds out of the aforementioned Everett Kennel, who did the Everett uh, trifecta. Uh, owner is Vince Berland trained by Kelsey Goobles and then you got number seven LK's crushing it 75 pounds uh, kennel uh, out of the Lashmet kennel owned by Jill Lashmet and trained by Ken Deacon and then you got uh, the, coming out of eight Bart's Bionics 76 pounds out of the Bartley kennel owned by Rhonda Bartley trained by Ken Brotherton so 
Um, who's your favorite? Let's let's see in the comment section. Um, oh, Jen, you're watching us from work. Uh oh, don't let the boss ca don't let the boss catch you there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Teresa, that doesn't surprise me. You, is that is that supposed to be Gavinci, Javinci, Javinci? Um, that's your favorite. Who's everybody else rooting for? I, I, I'm torn between Bunny and Flying Gavenshi. But Flying Gavenshi's won, just won a stakes race over there at Derby Lane, so I, I'm going to lean, I'm going to lean Bunny because she hasn't, uh, um, hasn't won a race yet, a stakes race. So, and we all know the, all the work Sharon's done for us. But then again, Mary Beth has done a lot of good stuff too, so she likes flying Gavenshi. I personally, I like flying Tilapia, but she's not there. She didn't make it, unfortunately. LK's crushing it, um, has had uh, some success. And, uh, doo -doo. flying Gavenshi was the morning line favorite at 5 to 2, uh, followed by LK's crushing it at 4, four to 1. Uh, Deco Colt Gun at 9 to 2. And uh, Bunny Flamenco Dancer at at six to one, so it should should be an interesting race. Um, should be an interesting race, and I can't wait to see it. Hopefully, it doesn't cra the feed don't crap out on us like like the last one when Flying Gavenshi um, ups up. I'm gonna call call it upset upset the field and um, took home that one. So they're right now they are running they are running race eight. Um, or, is, or it says nine minutes to post to race eight. I thought they just ran eight. Yeah, they just ran eight, so it'll be nine. So we're getting closer. Okay, so Support Working Animals is going to come out with a calendar fundraiser. And we get, we get it. Um, we get it. Patience is wearing thin. Um, yeah, that's nine to nine. That's what I thought. The, the the stats are for race eight. So we got another nine minutes, and then we'll send it over to Derby Lane and the legendary Jim Peak. Um, but let's talk about the calendar, the fundraiser calendar. Um, You want to monitor the SWA page, Support Working Animals, for instructions on how to submit your photos. So you're going to be able to submit your photos of your retireds, your racing. I think they're going to do a mix, if I'm not mistaken. I know Teresa will correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, So, um, which she does often because I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> so um, they'll give you the timeline the deadlines and all that sort of good stuff and uh, this is going to coincide with um, um, the filing probably um, you know we understand people are waiting so they we haven't done any fundraisers and we're good we're good on funds but once it gets into the court system um, probably going to need more so at least then it gets filed. Everybody knows what's going on. Uh, you'll be able to file it publicly. And um, we'll need money there. And as I told you, I may do a telethon or I may just do cannonballs for cash. Now, if you've ever seen a 320-pound fat ass do cannonballs into a pool in Florida, um, you're not going to want to miss that one. I may die that day. But that's okay. If I can raise some money and, you know, they haul me out on a gurney and nine one, call 911, um, if I can raise a couple thou, uh, it'll be worth it. I mean, <laughs> I'm old. What the hell do I care? Um, but, yeah, so either we're going to do a telethon or I'm going to do just do cannonballs for cash. Or cannonballs for cash will be part of the telethon. Um, so either way, we're going to be doing, as soon as it, once it's filed and people see that, you know serious shits going on um we're gonna do we're gonna do stuff like that um 
maybe if I do a telethon I can get crazy Al Hoffman uh, via satellite or I, I'm pretty sure I know the technology that I can hook up um, to him over there in Nebraska and you know we can tag team on some stuff and and figure it out and raise some money but yeah once it's filed we're going to need to raise more money so that's just the way it is and uh, I'm still rambling here because we've got some time to fill before uh, the race so maybe what I should do is go back through our five uh, races of the week I can definitely do that um, ba -bum -bum. so let's do that just for the hell of it so the first one RCK Archimedes Anson's in motion they're off and racing in the ninth at the break, it's an 8 1 2 uh, 6 uh, 3. It's the 5 now. RCK Archimedes, the 1 JS blown away. The 6 oh yeah, Mad Max. It's 5 1 6 3 2 4 down the back stretch. RCK Archimedes, the 6 oh yeah, Mad Max. The 3 RS Libby Lee. It's 5 6 3 2 1 4. They'll head for home. RCK Archimedes. All right, so the poll is up. So our first one was we're going to go through these and then. Then I think by the time we're done, we'll uh, we'll get over the Derby Lane. So the first one, RCK Archimedes. The second this week on the poll uh, that you're going to vote for is WW's Malort. Airs and air on the move. It's post time. They're off and racing in the third at the break. It's a five seven six one four eight two around the turn. Roulette with the lead up on the outside. WW is Malort. The six is Oh yeah, Diesel. It's one seven six five four two eight around the turn. It's WW Malort. A roulette. Oh yeah, Diesel. The five is Charlotte York. Down the stretch. It's closed. And it was WW's more paid thirty four twenty. Yeah, Teresa, you never came back to me and gave me my answer as if we were gonna put those in the store or not. So um if you wanna PM me how you wanna do that, or if you wanna take care of that, so either you are gonna take the orders or we'll get them through the store so that we can um um keep track of the quantity. So that's basically it, and then have all the orders so that none get lost, even though it's a free product. So let me know how you want to handle that, and we will go ahead. But let's take a look at the third dog for this week, which is Manzano's Sea of Fire. Here comes Rusty. Wayne Racing in the ninth. Who wants the lead? Three and one battle it out. Two down rushes. Five, eight, seven, six, four is content to be last. And they're tightly congested through that first bend. With the two calling shots early, that's Manny Lane. Three in the chase. Oh, so sassy. There's the eight. Manzano Zia fire around close early. And this one could be tough from here. Manny Lane's all out, but here comes Manzano Zia Fire on the offstride. Looks comes back for more. Two looks to hang on. Eight's under a rally. A big performance tonight by Manzano Zia Fire. Yeah, Manzano Zia Fire takes that one. Yeah, Teresa, I know we've had everybody everybody's had problems this week. I know you've had a bunch of problems. Um I have two. And everybody else, which makes it so disconcerting when you're you know working your ass off on this stuff and then doing your regular job and uh, then shit goes wrong in life and uh, you're <laughs> being disparaged by by the by a few so yeah but we plug on all right here's number four uh, there's two minutes to race nine so let's rush through this RT's Arlo Anderson's in motion they're off and racing in the ninth at the break. It's at two, four, six, one, eight, five, three, and seven. It's the four RTs Arlo with the lead. The one as Saber Dagger up on the outside. The eight or not up the rail is Oh Yeah Elvira. 
It's 4-1. Eight around the turn. It's still Artie Zarlo, Saber Dagger, or not. Artie Zarlo. And once again, Artie Zarlo did pay out 296.40. Again, I, I have never seen a payout that high. If anybody has, man, just post it in the chat. Man, that, that was some serious cash. All right, number five this week was Flying Ronnie J. They're off and racing in the ninth at the break. Eight, four, one, two, three, six, seven. Around the turn, Flying Ronnie J. Up on the inside, LK Short Fuse. The three, Red's Hot Chili is there. Dips to the rail now. It's four, eight, three, five, two, six, and seven. They'll head for home. LK Short Fuse, Flying Ronnie J. The four! LK Short Fuse, it's close. No, but it was not LK Short Fuse. It would be Flying Ronnie J in the photo. Flying Ronnie J in the photo. Uh, drink more coffee. I don't know if that's directed towards me, but I don't drink coffee. So um, let's do this. Let's go to race nine. All right, Kentucky boy. The jackpot carry over tonight, $3,312. It must be forced out tonight. Get in on that twin try. You have two minutes. I'm trying, trying to see, see if I can, can up the volume, volume on um, the top monitor, which is carrying the race. Guess not. Guess not. All right, we'll sit back and wait for race nine, and then uh, the next race will be the Husker Magic. All right, for those just tuning in, we're cut, we've cut over to, to Derby Lane, and we're just waiting for the um, Husker Magic, which is race 10. So um, I'm done talking, except to fill in this time here, and just to let you know, we're going to watch race 9, which includes one of our Greg Morse's and Cal Holland's dogs, Kentucky Boy. Um... And like I said, we're just waiting for waiting for the uh, Husker Magic Finals, which is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be the race of the year. So um, I'm going to turn the audio over to Derby Lane, even though there's nothing there. I wish they would play their music between, like everybody else does, because when I went there, they had some kick-butt music. Holy moly. Um, Palm Beach, too. They play some cool stuff takes you back to the 80s. 
Greyhounds are entering the starting box. Now Harrison Hare on the move. It's race number nine. The twin tribe force out. It's post time. They're open racing at the break. It's a four, five, two, one, three, six, seven, and eight. Around the turn, DDM's Hailstorm with the lead. The two SC's Punisher, the five Kentucky Boy. It's four, two, five, eight, three. Around the turn, DDM's Hailstorm, the two SC's Punisher, four, two, five, and eight. DDM's Hailstorm, the two SC's Punisher. All right, looks like a photo for third. Looks like they got that, the number five. So the, I think five was Kentucky Boy. Cool. Uh, we lo I love Kentucky Boy. Love all the Kentucky dogs. Um, for those of you just joining, we're just waiting, uh, filling time here until the Husker Magic Final, which is the next race here at Derby Lane that you're watching uh, from Derby Lane. So. Go. 2 4 Quinella, 45 40. 2 4 Perfecta, 57 40. First half of the twin try, 245, 242, 20, 52 twin try exchanges, superfect is 665 even. Time of the race is 30, 71. 10th race now, the 10th race, it's the final of the $50,000 Husker Magic Fall Sprint Stakes. It's also our third $250 cash drawing of the evening. Don't forget the official race page for the fall sprint is located in the center of tonight's racing program. So once again, the race page for this stakes final is located in the center 
of tonight's racing program. Ten minutes. All right, so in 10 minutes and 30 sec some seconds, we are going to have a champion from Derby Lane, the Husker Magic Stakes Race. So stay tuned, hang out. Um, uh, the SWA announcement of the team, yes, I saw, saw that. I did uh, mention Dunn right off the top. Um, so uh, she is going to be in on this along with um, Tom Murtha who is in North Dakota. He's a constitutional lawyer. Um, he has argued before many state Supreme Courts, I believe, and he's also been in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. So it's good to have that kind of experience because I got a feeling we may be going to the U.S. Supreme Court unless uh, we win and Florida decides not to appeal, um, which would probably save them a lot of money. But... Um, don't get us wrong, that's not the only lawsuit that Support Working Animals has been thinking about filing. So, once again, um, patience is needed, I know. I mean, hell, it may take may take a year or so to restart the sport back up in Florida. Uh, there will be, a f you know, people who have dropped out, and there may be new people who want to get involved. I know if um, racing gets overturned here in Florida, I'm buying a dog, I'm buying a few. And I'm buying. Uh, I'm going to go in with a bunch of people, and we're going to buy one dog, and all one racer, and all the proceeds from that dog are going to go back to the Ronald McDonald House here, in Southwest Florida. Um, that would be my way of putting the whipped cream fu uh, to a certain organization that sort of screwed over the Ronald McDonald House when somebody had that idea. And I can tell you, if any of you bozos are watching, you're not going to bully this Ronald McDonald House because. I know everybody there. I know everybody from the top on down. And none of them are going to listen to a damn word you say. So, yep, that's another incentive for me to be on this is because I want to do that. Um, Ronald McDonald's dear, near and dear to our hearts. Um, had a co-worker who actually had to use them in New Jersey when she lost her baby years ago. Um, and like I say, I volunteer over there. My wife does and we go over there a few times a year and cook dinner so that's my deal and that was one of the reasons that brought me into this fight it wasn't that I believed yes or no in greyhound racing it was the scumbags that were trying to get rid of it and passing the lies and they screwed around screwed around with the Ronald McDonald house in another state so that's my long story short so we're waiting here seven minutes to post to race 10 over at Derby Lane I'm waiting to see if they're going to have a post parade or what they're going to do. Let's just take a look, another look at the dogs in the Husker Magic. And there we go. Um, those are the eight, eight that are in there. Uh, you got number one, Deco Gatling Gun. Number two, Sabotage Steve. That sounds like good. Steve's a good name. Sabotage Steve. Yeah, everybody's trying to sabotage Steve. LK Santorini is in the three hole. Flamenco Dancer, a.k.a. Bunny, is in number four. Uh, Deco Colt Gun is in the fifth box. And Flying Gavenshi is in the sixth. LK's Crushing It is in the seven. And Bart's Bionic is in the eight. Six minutes to post over at Derby Lane. Um, can't wait till the race stops or starts because you're all probably sick of listening to me. Um, but, yep, that's our legal team. Tom Murtha is still there. And now we got Dawn Alba out of West Palm Beach. So she's around in all the groups, so welcome her. And she is raring to go. Holy moly. She is, she is wanting to stick a spear in somebody. And it ain't anybody in the racing industry, let me tell you that. Um, she may want to stick that thing harder than the guy riding the horse at the FSU games. Uh, plants that thing in the middle of the field. Um, that's good. We like that. I like fire. I like. I like. I like attitude. Um, hell, I like swearing because that's. 
Swearing is a sign of intelligence, they say. Yeah. Um, I got a house full of people, so you probably hear everything in the background um, while I'm doing this show. But four minutes to post. Four minutes to post in race 10. Uh, if by chance you're watching us from Derby Lane, hurry up and get your bets in. I'll take uh, three to one, three to one on Bunny in the four box. Three to one, and LK is crushing it. I'll take that. Uh, Bart's Bionic at nine to nine to two. Deco Colt Gun ten to one. That's interesting. Um, he's been around. He's been around. He's he's won a few races. Sabotage Steve at twenty two to one. And um, Deco Gatling Gun is up there. Yeah, Chief Osceola. That's it. Yeah, Don wants to stick that spear in Gray 2K and the state of Florida harder than Chief Osceola hits that thing in the middle of the field at FSU. Uh, that's the impre that's the impression I get. Um, but uh, um, those are your odds right now. Um, your favorites are Deco Colt Gun, which is surprising at five to two. The four is Flamenco Bunnies uh, sitting there, three and a half to one or seven to two. And uh, then you got the three LK Santorini and the seven LK is crushing it. Um, I could see a three, four, five, six Superfecta box on this one. Might not be a bad bet. Three, four, five, six Superfecta box. Then that leaves out seven. You could probably throw him in there. Three, four, five, six, seven. Because uh, LK is crushing it. Can win the. Can win this one too. Um, so I don't know. You, I think your winner is going to come from those dogs. I don't think we're going to have a long shot tonight. I don't think one or two. Um, sorry, Steve Saris, if you're watching. Uh, two with Sabotage Steve. That's pretty funny. So Steve Saris owns Sabotage Steve. So. He must have had one. Must have had one of his employees name it, or uh, he named it basically for what Tony Glover in Florida is trying to do uh, to him last last year. So that's probably where that uh, that name comes from. All right, we got two minutes to post, so I'm going to shut the hell up, and I'm going to put the feedback to Derby Lane. He has Jim Peake hasn't been saying anything, but um, I'm sure he will in the post parade and all that stuff. And so we're going to go back to Derby Lane and. Uh, just wait for the race to start and the legendary Jim Peak.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Greyhounds are stepping on the track. It's race 10. It's the final of the 2019 Husker Magic Fall Sprint Stakes. This group of top sprinters sprints 550 yards. Now, here are your entries. Waits in post position for the stakes final. In post one from the Nova Kennels, trained by Missy Cabez, it's Deco Gatling Gun, 77 and a half. Post two from the Abernathy Kennels, trained by K. Ruth Abernathy, Sabotage Steve, 73. In post three, from the Lashmed Kennels, trained by Ken Deacon, L.K. Santorini, 62 pounds. Post four, from Farmer Racing, trained by John Farmer, it's Flamenco Dancer, 63 and a half. Post five, also from the Nova Kennels, trained by Missy Cabiz, Deco Colt Gun, 72 and a half. Post six from Everett Racing, trained by Kelsey Goebbels, Flying Da Vinci, 67 pounds. Post seven from the Lashmet Kennels, trained by Ken Deacon, LK's crushing it, 75 and a half. And the eighth from Bartley Kennels, trained by Ken Brotherton, it's Bart's Bionic. 76 pounds. That's the field. The 10th race. The Husker Magic Fall Sprint Stakes Final. $50,000 up for grabs. You now have two minutes. And ladies and gentlemen, just a quick reminder. Don't forget now, this will be our fourth $250 cash drawing in the evening takes a $10 minimum play in any of our wagering pools and you're eligible. You now have one minute.
once again, if you just join us, we are waiting. It's less than a minute, I believe, till they load the athletes into the starting box for the finals. Fifty thousand dollars, Oscar Magic Stakes Race from Derby Lane. That's what we're waiting on. If you have come here and seen Dead Air, so uh, just wait, and I think you're going to see a hell of a race. This, like I said, it's maybe the best one of the year in Florida. Now the Greyhounds are entering the starting box. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to go. The Husker Magic Ball Sprint Stakes Final from the rail out. Deco Gatling Gun, Sabotage Steve, LK Santorini, Flamenco Dancer, Deco Cold Gun, Flying Da Vinci, LK's Crushing It, and Bart's Bionic. The 2019 Husker Magic Ball Sprint. Duro fan racing at the break. It's a three, seven, six, four, five, one, eight, and two. It's LK Santorini. There's LK's crushing it. LK Santorini back to second. Flying Da Vinci comes up the rail. It's seven, six, three, around the turn. It's LK's crushing it. Flying Da Vinci. LK's. Crushing it wins the Husker Magic Fall Sprint Stakes. What a performance by LK's Crushing It. Holy cow. He got out around that first turn and man, oh man, oh man, he was gone. Wow, never look back. So there you go. Congratulations to LK's Crushing It. Um, and congratulations to all involved for the LK's Crushing It. What a beautiful win that is. We're just going to hang out here. We're going to wait for the payouts and then uh, the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Husker Magic Paul Sprint Stakes Final, post seven, LK's crushing it. Two seven Quinella, one hundred twenty dollars twenty cents. Seven two Perfecto, one ten forty. Two dollar Trivec is seven two six. 
360, 680, the Superfecto, $1,932.30. Time of the race, a season's best for the 550 course. A quick 30, 49. Mutual windows are now open for wagering race 11. Get those twin tri exchanges in this jackpot. Must go. 10 minutes. I was hoping they'd do the presentation right after the race, but obviously not. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to end this here, um, and um, you can go over to Derby Lane site, or I can start a new broadcast depending on uh, if anybody's going to watch it. Yeah, thirty fourteen. What a great race! So that was a great race. Congrats again to all involved with LK's crushing it. Um, automatic entry into our little tournament here so um, that being said it was a good race he took uh, took command early and uh, never never had to look back so once again thanks everybody for watching the Greyhound race of the week appreciate it uh, share get the poll going get people to join up get people to go to the website www.keepgreyhoundsracing.org um, trying to keep that site more updated um, going forward but there's a ton of information there um, I've got all of Dennis McKeon's good stuff there um, links 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 you know uh, start posting some links to the keep greyhounds racing you know when these articles come up uh, there's a fact section there's a bunch of information um, the more links we get out there the better we get rated in search so uh, help us out that way so with that being said we'll play the ending here and uh, maybe I'll pop I'll try and pop up um, um, the feedback from Derby Lane but I just want to end get this recording ended here so it's not too long because it's been going for about an hour 24 and I haven't eaten dinner yet so I'm gonna go do that I, I Shut up and sit down. Shut up and sit down.